Well, thanks so much for uh, having me here today. Uh, let me just, so what I, I'm going to just talk about a few things and, and leave, uh, why don't we play a time uh, open for questions. And so, uh, first I want to talk about Paul Ryan, a uh, good friend of mine, and, and why I think that he's right for the country uh, at this point in time. Uh, then talk a little bit about um, what we're really facing in terms of what's called the fiscal cliff and, and just the, uh, the debt crisis that we, we wandered into. And, and then uh, talk about uh, where I see the end of the year going, particularly in the, in the land duck session. First of all, you know, this presidential campaign, uh, it's sort of historically reminded, I think President Barack Obama, first of all, has taken um, pages out of, out of two uh, presidential campaigns historically. And, and the first is uh, the uh, Truman campaign, uh, I think of 1948, uh, when it was, uh, uh, the, it was kind of, um, it's the, it's the, the, the Congress. That's, it's not me in my administration. It's the it's the Congress. I'm trying to remember what he called them. Uh, uh, the do nothing Congress. And so, uh, but if you look at Barack Obama's record, in, in in the first two years of his administration, he calculated that that's when he was going to put his agenda forward, uh, where he had a Democrat-controlled Congress. And so, if you think about it, what parts of the parts of his agenda that he did not get through? which would have only been pretty much cap and trade. So two elements maybe of his agenda that he did not get through. He certainly got Obamacare through. He got the stimulus through. He got Dodd-Frank uh, through. And so he didn't get um, cap and trade done. It passed the House, got bottled up in the Senate. But through the Environmental Protection Agency, he's been very aggressive in the rulemaking process of implementing uh, the outcome uh, of what he certainly tried to do there. Uh, and then, uh, Things like he didn't get um, a card checked up. But if you look at the National Labor Relations <coughs> that of his appointees, he's pretty much been able to implement the equivalent of, of card check uh, in the things he's doing. So his, the, the Obama agenda is there. And, and it's not working and it's not moving this economy forward. So now he's taken a page, a, a second page, uh, uh, which is uh, out of the 2004 campaign, quite frankly, he took a page out of the Republicans. That in 2004, the, the, the central uh, policy of the Bush administration was the Iraq war, in terms of how the American people viewed the administration, and it was not a popular war. And the Democrats certainly capitalized on it. And so the president didn't want to run on the Iraq war. And so you would have Bob Kerry stepping forward and saying, I'm a Vietnam veteran. Uh, I can fix this. I can move the country in the right direction. And so what, it, what, what was the, um, the strategy was to undermine Kerry uh, on the basis of the service of Vietnam and to slip both things and everything. And if you look at this, this race in, in 2012, you've got Mitt Romney stepping forward with Bain Capital and saying, I, I was with Bain Capital. I've been a business guy. I know how to fix this. And the, and the, the principal uh, policy agenda of the administration being unpopular with the American people in terms of the economic policy. And so the president can't run on his record. So it's about undermining uh, Mitt Romney under, uh, on a personal basis, undermining uh, being capitalist. I think if you look at all the, the uh, possibilities uh, for vice presidential nominees that were on that list, None of them would have changed, I think, the debate. Now, they would have enhanced it to some degree, but it still would have been, I mean, this presidential campaign is pretty much like, you know, a campaign, an ugly campaign of somebody running for student body, student body president of a high school, and not for the presidency of the United States. It's, it's pretty much a personality contest at this time. And that changes the dynamic and puts issues back on the table. That is a risk, because this country is in a crisis. And it's being honest with the American people about how significant the problem is. Um, let, me, let me just talk about uh, Paul Ryan from a personal point of view, uh, as knowing him and working with him. And uh, he, I think, as the American people learn about who Paul Ryan is, they're going to find out how stunning he is as a person. That he truly strikes me as Reagan S. And I've been with him in two meetings with the president behind closed doors without any press. 
And in both those needs, he dominates. And he doesn't dominate through a partisan edge. He doesn't dominate because he's able to spin things. He dominates uh, out of his sheer intellect. And he dominates because he has empathy and he understands how to bring issues down to where uh, the average person can understand them. And so he can be uh, in an interview uh, with the most aggressive interviewer, and he won't turn that person around. But the people observing that interview will be turned around. And he has seen the right person at the right time uh, in our history. Because his whole life has been, he, he's, he was kind of studying budget stuff and predicting fiscal calamity before it was cool you know, to do that. Uh, in Washington, D.C., first as a staffer, uh, then as a member of Congress. And so he knows it inside now. He knows it whole. And, and so he's thought about this specific issue for a very long time, about debt and deficits and the decline of America and how to turn things around. And so it, it's a bold choice, but, but I think it's, it's the right choice, and it changes the tenor of this debate. And I think as the American people learn about these issues, that, that, you know, when they say, uh, oh, he's, he, his plan, and he's the only one that has had a plan to really before Congress that, that does the math, and the only one that has the courage to put out a substantive plan. And so it's stunning to see, particularly Democrats, criticize him for having put out a plan when they have no plan of their own. <laughs> that the Senate hasn't even been able to pass a budget to, to lay their cards on the table about the future of America. And, and a budget is a little bit different than within at the state level. We have appropriations bills that are done on an annual basis. Uh, we do that. Uh, that's our spending. Whereas in the state level legislature, they do, their budget bill is their spending bill. It, it's a blueprint for us. Uh, what it does is it lays out the top line in terms of spending for each particular program. Um, the, uh, and it shows the deficit and, and what you're going to do about bringing down the deficit over a 10-year period. Um, so it, it is, uh, it's sunny to me. And the reason why uh, the other side, the critics, don't want to put out a budget bill is because it would lay out how bad the situation is and the fact that they have no solution and they have no answer. So I, I just think that, I mean, he's, a, and he's the most authentic human being you've ever met. And he's not a guy who wears the ambition on his sleeve. I went to, I was on the House floor with him uh, when there was a Senate vacancy in Wisconsin. And Tommy Thompson, the former governor of Wisconsin, former cabinet member uh, in the Bush administration, stepped forward uh, to run. But he deferred to Paul Ryan first and said, only if Paul Ryan doesn't run will I run. And so I went to Paul Ryan and I said, hey, well, what are you going to do? What do you think you're going to do? And he said, you know, I am not in this for a career. I'm in this for a crusade. And, and it's not like he had to think about it. Um, I've never seen him uh, become unhinged. I've never seen him even so much as being nervous. And I was, I was with him one day on the House floor where he was giving kind of the closing debate on the budget bill in the House. And Steny Hoyer, who I think is the most articulate Democrat, uh, was giving the, the opposition. And he was giving a long speech, and he was looking right at Ryan across the, the <coughs> house floor when he was doing his speech, and pointing out and saying, you know, you're going to you know, throw this first class of people under the bus, and this class of people in the bus, and all the demagogy, the budget. And of course, it was me sitting there. I would have been taking copious notes and making sure that I hit every single point that was raised. He wasn't, you know, he was kind of just like looking at him dispassionately. Then he rose, and he walked down to the podium on the House floor without any notes. And he gave the most stunning speech, and I was just in awe. And he said, this budget is really about two visions and two paths for America. And, and, and the one path, and he talked about the debt decline of continuing on the status quo, or returning to a limited, limited constitutional government and the free enterprise system and prosperity. I mean, it was stunning. It, it was so Reagan-esque. And, and, I, and I just think that, and I, and I just really think that he's the right person at the right time uh, to, to uh, probably do a lot more than, than uh, uh, most vice presidents do uh, if, in fact, we win. And so uh, it, it's a risk, but, but I think that it's...